Hello, my name is Vincenzo, and today I'll be showing you how to make an Arduino based security system. So to start, some of the things you'll need for this build is an Arduino Uno. I'm using the Arduino Uno Model 3. You'll need a 4x4 matrix keypad. You'll need a small breadboard. A red and green LED. Two 100 ohm resistors. You'll need a small servo with the half horn. You'll also need an 8 ohm speaker or a piezo buzzer, whatever you have. You'll need some jumper wires. You'll need 8 male to male jumper cables for the keypad. You'll need 2 male to female jumper wires for the speaker and three male to female jumper wires for the servo and uh, some of the tools that you will need is a star screwdriver and uh, wire trimmers, wire cutters so the first thing you're going to do is make sure you have a clean area to start so I'm going to move everything to the side So the first thing you're going to do is grab your Arduino Uno and your breadboard. First thing I, I'm going to do is grab my yellow jumper wire. It doesn't have to be yellow, it can be black or any color. And I connect it to the ground of the Arduino. And I connect it to the ground over here on the breadboard. Once you've done that, you can grab your red LED, plug the cathode, the negative, into the power rail, and the positive, the anode, into any row of the breadboard. And do the same for the green LED. Once that's complete, you're going to grab your two 100 ohm resistors, and you're just going to place them in series with each anode of the LED. Right now, I'm not going to be trimming anything because I'm just testing it right now. This is my first prototype. Now with two other jumper cables, we're going to connect the red LED to A1 of the Arduino. Just tuck that all the way. And for the green, do the same, but connect it to A0. Once that step is complete, you're going to want to grab your 4x4 matrix keypad and your 8 male to male jumper cables. Add male to female, so I just added male headers on this side. So you're going to connect those to pins 2 to pin 8 of the Arduino Uno. Once that's done, you can just from pins 8 to pins 2. Connect it to the keypad like this. Once that's done, you're going to want to grab your servo, 
and three of your jumper wires. So I'm going to be using a black, white, and gray one. Black and white I'll use for ground and power. And gray I'll use for the control pin. And I connect the, the white to 5 volts and ground obviously to ground. And the control pin of the Arduino I connect to pin 10. Once that's complete, you're going to want to grab your anom speaker. And right now I just have these two jumper wires I'm going to be using to connect it, doesn't matter which way. And I connect one of them to ground and the other one to pin 11 of the Arduino. I'll just bring them over this way. And there's no polarity, so I can just connect it to either pin, doesn't matter. And for the hardware, that's pretty much it. The reason why I use the analog pins for the LEDs is because I only have pin 12 and 13 available left for the digital pins and I may add another sensor so I may need those pins so I'm just using the analog to control them. On to the software. Hello everyone, this is Vincenzo, also Floppy Arduino. And today we're going to be doing the second part of the Arduino security system. This is the software side. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a blank Arduino sketch. Once your sketch is open, I always like to start my code with Okay then. My keyboard was a little frozen there. So I like to start my programs with a multi-line comment with my name, date, and the project. I always like to start saving from the beginning so you don't lose any work. I'm just going to call this demo for security system as you can see there I already made a test but I go step by step and show you how it's done so the first thing you're going to want to do is import three libraries so you're going to use the function hashtag include include and you're going to want to include the password H library. I'm just going to copy and paste this three times. You're going to want to include keypad.h and servo.h. So what we're going to want to do after creating our three libraries, we're going to want to create three things. We're going to want to create a, a servo and two passwords. So we're going to create a servo. So we're going to call servo and we'll name it lock your semicolon and we'll just add a comment creates a servo then we're going to want to create our two passwords so our first one we'll call password we'll call it pass and it's going to equal password open a the bracket open double quotes and for now I don't know, we'll just set it to something we can always change it after but for now we'll do one five nine three five seven we'll create like a little x pattern on the keypad we can always change it after like i said but We'll set that for now, close your quote, close your bracket, add a semicolon. And this creates the main login password. And this is a function that we'll use later on. We're going to create an admin account. So we can see how many times the system was unlocked and correct and do all that stuff. And eventually in the future I might add a function where we can change the main login password. So obviously we need a password again there, so we'll call password again. This time we'll call it admin and it will equal to a password. 
And then just using the things on the keypad, I basically spelled out code AD for code admin. So I just set it to C0D3AD. So it kind of spells it like code AD for code admin. We can always change it after. So now, from this point, now we're going to want to start creating all our variables and all our pins and stuff. So and am going to set up the keypad first, so I'll make a little section I'll call it a keypad setup. And the first things that we're going to want to define is the pins that the keypad is set to, so I'm going to call byte, I'm going to call it row pins, and it is going to be an array, so we'll open and close the square bracket, and it's going to equal open up a curly brace and the pins that are going to be for the rows is going to be pins oops it's going to be pins 9, 8, 7, and 6 we'll do the same thing for the columns so I'll name these just call pins and this will be set to 5, 4, oops 5, 4, 3 and two. You can change these depending on which pins you're using on your Arduino, but this is what I use. So, row pins, call pins. Now we're going to want to create a constant byte. I'll call it rows, and it's equal to four because we have four rows. So if we have four rows on our keypad, we'll create another constant, constant byte. We'll call this one columns. So I'll just break calls, and also we have four columns. So we'll do that for our calls on keypad. Save there. So the next thing we're, we're going to want to do is um, create a key map. So we're going to create the characters, create the characters of the keypad. So we're going to create a character array. We'll just call it keys. Oops. Um, so for the first value in the array, we're going to pass in rows. And for this, we'll pass in columns. So this is a 2D array. So equal, open up your curly brace. So now you're going to want to, in single quotes, space out by commas, you're going to type in each item on your keypad. So you want three of these and one without. So now you're just going to read your keypad left to right, top to bottom. So on my keypad, this is one, two, three, and a capital letter A. Here is going to be four, five, six, and B. This is going to be seven, eight, nine, C. And then this is star, zero, pound symbol, and D. So these, is, these are the characters on the keypad that we're going to use. Um, so the next thing after this, I'll get your semicolon there. We're going to use a, a function called keypad. So we're going to create our actual keypad. So we're going to call keypad with a capital K. And we can use whatever we want. Just because it's a keypad, why not just call it keypad as well. And we're going to set that to a keypad. And we're going to pass in another function as a first thing called make key map. Oops, key map. And this, using our keys, we're going to create our basically our 4x4 four four matrix with all our with our row pins, our column pins, rows calls 
I think that's pretty much it for that. So basically what we've done here, we've created our keypad called keypad. And we're creating the keypad and it's we're gonna create we're gonna map the, the keys with the um, the character array that we made here using these pins for the rows and columns and a number of rows and a number of columns. So for the keypad that's pretty much it. So I'll just just separate this section. You don't really have to, just a, it's just easier to find where each thing is if you have to go troubleshooting. And then this is just going to be other pins and variables. So now we're going to want to create a few variables to store our pins. So we're going to create an integer, we'll call it red LED. This is going to be on pin A1. And this is going to be used for this will be the red incorrect LED. So when the password's incorrect, it'll flash that. Uh, we'll do another one. This will be the green LED. This will be on A0. Green LED for correct. We're going to have um, a servo, which is going to be locking or unlocking your door, safe, whatever you want to use this for. So we'll just call it servo pin, and it's going to be on pin 10. Uh, yeah. Servo, whatever. Uh, we're going to have a little speaker, so I'll just name it speaker. And it's going to be on pin 11 of the Arduino. And the reason, I'm just going to mention this now, the reason why for the red and green LED, why I use the analog pins. I just because I really wanted to adjust the brightness instead of having to use PWM or whatever but I might want to add another sensor or something to this build and since I've already used all except for two of my digital pins I wanted to leave those empty in case I want to add another sensor but if you don't want anything else you can just easily use pins 12 and 13 for your LEDs and just use digital right wherever you see analog right. So after we created those, we're just going to create other variables. So these will be other variables for storing data. So we're going to have an integer called tries. And this will just be set to 3, so this is going to be used for amount oops, amount of login attempts. Uh, we'll have two other integers called, um, we'll call it times unlocked and in incorrect set this to zero these will be used to store amount of times system was logged in to or pass incorrect and I think that's basically all the variables we're going to need so now we can go into our setup section of the program the first thing we're going to want to do is start our serial monitor so we can receive text from the Arduino, data from the Arduino, and um, just for also debugging or whatever. So we're going to call serial.begin. This will start the serial monitor and we'll just give it 9600 baud rate, which is just a standard. You can use 11500 or any other baud rate you want. Just this is. 9600 is more than enough and it's good enough for our uses like you don't really have to go higher it's not really sending information it's just sending a few lines of text so 9600 is fine so this just starts the monitor um, now we'll set our pin types we'll just say pin types so we're going to call the function pin mode which basically you pass in the pin that you want and you you pass whatever you want it to be 
so either input output there's also pull up but we don't have to worry about that so we're basically just gonna be using output for this because the keypad feature already sets what the input and output pins for it so then we, we don't have to worry about this stuff just all of these variables here our LEDs our servo and speaker that's what we have to set so we'll start with our red LED it's gonna be an output just copy and paste this a few times then we can edit it this will be our green LED this will be our servo pin this will be our speaker um, another thing we'll do is we'll attach our servo so we're gonna call we named our servo lock so we're gonna write lock dot attach so this will attach the servo to a specific pin and we want to attach it to our servo pin so we're just gonna type in servo pin here this it attaches the servo to the servo pin on digital 10. Um, so next we are going to want to make sure the servo is in its locked position. So for me I'd used 10 so we're going to do locked our right 10 use servo to locked position uh, so this is setting servo uh, we'll just say this the next section will be startup text so here we're just gonna output some basic text to the to serial monitor so we're gonna call serial dot print ln so it's gonna print a line of text the monitor and we're gonna say use star to enter the password use pound to clear uh, we'll do another print line so serial dot print we'll say enter password and I think that's it for the setup section we'll just save there so we don't lose any of our work so next we're gonna go into our loop section and our loop section is very simple because it's literally two lines of code which just calls some of our other functions that we'll be making shortly so for our loop section, all we're going to do is we're going to call our keypad that we made, keypad with lowercase k because that's what we named it, and we're going to get key. So what this does is the get key function, which is part of the keypad library, is going to be constantly, constantly looping and trying to see which key is being pressed. So that's the one thing and actually I forgot something in our setup section this won't work because we need to have a event listener that will be looking for key presses so we have to call one more feature in our setup is going to be keypad so our keypad dot add event listener and we're going to create a function called keypad event So right now, obviously, if we save and come just to verify, you will get an error here because this function is not declared because we haven't made it yet. So we're going to do that in the next step in one minute. So then here, we're just going to always make sure our server is in the lock position again. So we're going to say lock.right 10 locked position look for pad keypad presses so our, our loop section that's basically it now we have to do the two main functions which is going to be our our check password function which will be 
comparing what we enter to the passwords and we're going to have another function which is going to be our keypad event which will be looking for the keys getting the key press and doing all that stuff so we're going to create another method i'm used to calling the methods because i used to code java i think they're called the same in c functions methods whatever you want to call them so this one is going to be void keypad event and we're going to pass in keypad event and e key so the keypad event is a feature in the keypad library which is pretty self-explanatory it's going to look for a keypad event so an event from the keypad if a button is pressed or released or held in this case we're only be using the, the the pressed feature we don't have to worry about any of the other ones because they're not really useful for our application and then e key is just a preset variable used for storing the um, the key that's being pressed extra okay so the first thing we're going to want to do in our think is create a switch case so basically you could use an if statement but this way is just better so we're just going to use a switch case so we're going to say switch switch i can spell correctly today and in our switch we're going to pass in keypad get state so this will basically run when a button is being pressed so if it's true then it will run this section so our case is going to be pressed in caps like that with a colon not a semicolon I like to indent my line to just show that what's part of which section so in our case we're going to print out serial dot print and we'll just say tries left so this would be used to tell the user when they press the key how many attempts they have left to log in we'll serial dot print our variable tries And then we are gonna serial a uh, print line. Uh, no, just do a regular print. Enter. So from here, now to make it sound like kind of like a realistic alarm system or safe, we're gonna use a function called tone, which is basically gonna play a frequency with a duration to um a piezo, a, a buzzer, whatever you have, speaker. So the things I can take in for this function is the pin. So we're going to pass in speaker. Let's say we want the frequency, frequency of 900 hertz. And we'll just say a very small delay, 50 milliseconds for the duration. So this plays beep tone and speaker. When key is pressed, just save. Um, and the next thing we're going to do here is now just a serial a print line descent, so print ln, and we're going to print e key so the user knows what button is being pressed. So now, but yeah. So after this switch, we're going to create another switch. It's going to be E key. So this will determine if special buttons like the pound or star are being pressed. So the first thing we're going to do in here is create a case in single quotes. Our first case will be the star key. regular colon not semicolon indent so if our stars press which is our enter key so this will be our enter password button I don't know you can label it whatever you want it's our key to enter the password into the system so we're gonna call a function called check password 
and right now we still have to create that so this will just call our check password method function whatever you want to call it so after we call that we'll just put a small delay in 10 milliseconds more than enough just so it has a little bit of time to take a break so the, the microphone is not always running just has like a little second to take a breather whatever and then after this we'll put our break statement break now we'll go back one tab we're going to create another case and so this is going to be our, our pound symbol so if our pound symbol is pressed we're going to want to reset our password so set all passwords to clear so we're going to use the function called reset which is part of the password library so we're going to call our variable so let's say password.reset that will reset our, our main login password to clear and we'll clear our admin password dot reset reset we'll just put another small delay you're not necessary just it just helps to have a few even if it's a f fraction of a second just to try and get your program to run a little smoother instead of just bang 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 fast it has some time and then we'll put another break can't type today and now we're going to create our default statement so if none of these are true so default so our default is just it's going to use a uh, function called append so basically it will send whatever keys being pressed into the the password library which has its own functions and stuff built into it and it will do all the comparing and math behind the scene so we don't have to worry about all that so we're just going to do a password called the pass dot append and we'll do the same for admin there are other ways of doing this just I just have it send whatever keys being pressed to both passwords and whichever one's true it'll log into that well log in it'll just run a certain code depending on which login it is so if the pass if the main password login is correct when you run the check password if it'll just do a basic unlock if the admin password is correct it'll go into the admin section and just print out the amount of times unlocked whatever maybe in the future Part of the admin account will be probably like to set a new password, but I'm still working that out. So for now, it's good as is. So basically, I think for this function, we are done. Now let's create our last function, which as seen here is going to be our check password function. So this is the function that's actually going to be doing all the math calculating, which password is correct or whatever so we're going to create a, a void and we call the check password and it does not need to take in anything so you can just open and close a bracket open your curly braces the first thing you're going to want to do in your, in your password function you're going to want to create an if statement so this one will be if the regular login password is correct should comment this a little bit first before we move on to here. Sends the key press. Key press to the password library, whatever. Whatever. You don't really have to, but whatever. So our first case, like as I just mentioned, is going to be if the regular password is correct. So we're going to call pass dot evaluate evaluate so basically if the password 
evaluates to our pass, which is our regular login password. So if it's true, we're going to get it to do our little login sequence. So we're going to serial dot print line password correct unlocked for I don't know let's say 10 seconds yeah 10 seconds sounds right that should be good enough so it'll print that out to the monitor and now We'll just put a small delay in again, 5 milliseconds, whatever. Now we're going to want to move our servo to the unlocked position, so we're going to call our lock.write. And in my case, I just made it move 90 degrees, but just my servo didn't like certain positions, so I set 10 to be the locked and 110 to be my unlocked position, so lose servo to unlocked position then after that we're going to want to play like a little unlock tone to the speaker so just create a little unlock tone melody so what we're going to do here is we're going to use make use of our tone feature again our tone function so we're going to say tone speaker and we'll say 900 for maybe 100 milliseconds. We'll put a small delay. Maybe we'll do 150 here. I'll just copy and paste this two more times and we'll just change this one. We'll do maybe, I don't know, let's do 100. We'll do 1100 and this one will do 1200. I think that sounds pretty good. Just I'll close this section up. It just looks nicer, like I said before. You don't have to do all this stuff. It just helps separate the code a little bit. So if, if there's any problems, you, it'll be easier to find which section is not working. Just look in your code and say, okay, unlock section melody is not working. Just look for this section and you know that's most likely where your error is. I guess, as I just said, you don't have to, but I to do it. So now we're gonna turn on our LEDs and whatever. So we're gonna analog, right? We'll say our green LED, and we're gonna have it line off full brightness. So an max in analog is gonna be two five five. So turn green LED on max. Um, now we're going to want our little 10 second delay, so we're going to call it delay, and 10 seconds is 10,000 milliseconds, so just, oops, brought semicolon, delay is 10 seconds, don't worry about all these little delays, it's not really going to affect it too much, it doesn't have to be perfect, just whatever, so after our 10 seconds, we're going to want to turn our LED off. Instead of 255, we'll put 0 here. Turn LED off. We're going to want to move our servo to the unlock, so we're going to call lock.write 10, which is we are locked. Move to locked position. We'll reset our total amount of tries back to 3. Tries equal to 3. Because when the password's incorrect, which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the admin password, and then the incorrect case for if both passwords are incorrect, it dec like it'll get rid of one try, whatever. Every time you get it wrong, so obviously if you get it correct, it's gonna reset. So that's what this is. We're just gonna reset the pass the amount of times. Uh, we're gonna want to call our our times unlocked. Let's see, yep. So time's unlocked. So we're gonna wanna increment that by one. So we'll call we'll call tries unlocked plus plus. This just adds one to time system was locked. 
and now we're going to want to reset the password so we'll just call pa so, uh, clear slash reset passwords mm -hmm. so we're going to call pass dot reset just like before admin dot reset now I'll just do one last print serial I'll do a print line here I'll say locked serial dot print line we will say enter pass word and for our regular case for our, our password that's done so next we're going to do we're going to make an, an else condition an else if condition else if this time it's going to be admin dot evaluate this time if the admin password is correct basically it's going to be almost the same so we could copy and paste but we'll just go through step by step just for whatever so we'll just increment before our we'll reset our tries and increment the times unlocked so after this we'll do a serial I'll print we'll say admin account we'll do another well before we'll yeah we'll put this to the unlocked position so we'll do our lock dot right one ten. You could use a variable for this, but it doesn't really matter instead of always typing ten and one ten. You could just be like make a variable for locked and unlocked position, doesn't really matter, but moves to unlocked position. So then after here I just thought it'd be cool to make like a little animation, so I'll just call loading loading thing. No, I'm really no, you can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna serial dot print checking. So here we're gonna make like a little animation to make it seem like it's loading into like an admin account. So now we're, we're going to make use of a, a for loop, which will repeat a certain amount of times based on a condition. So it's not like a while or a do while loop it's a, that either has to be true or something, whatever. This you just set the beginning value, the ending value, and how much it's incrementing or decrementing by. So we're going to use for. Uh, we'll just create an integer. We'll call it int c. It'll start at zero. Um, C. We'll save we'll a loop until it's less than eight, and we'll say C plus plus, which will just increment it by one each time. And then all we'll do is in here, we'll just print like a star, to make it look like it's doing something. We'll just put like a half second delay, so it'll delay by five hundred. We'll just space this out a little bit, just a little slow cleaner. Just a little bit of that stuff, just whatever. So after this, we'll just serial or print. We'll just use the slash n, which will basically tell it to make a new line. You go to the line here, just help. Space it out a bit, a little bit. So create an empty line. Whatever, we'll just make it look nicer when it's coming out of the serial monitor. And now we're gonna print. Times. Whole system was unlocked. So this is where the variables before times unlocked and what we're using the next one um, 
the incorrect this is it'll just store how many times either the admin or on a uh, regular account were logged into or the passwords were incorrect it's just a cool to have feature it's not necessary but we're in a serial a print Times unlocked. Now put a little delay to wait a little bit in between. The next one we'll just do two seconds. Delay two seconds, and then after this, um, this system was unlocked. Passwords were not correct. So we'll basically do the same thing here. But instead this will be incorrect. Um times password was not correct. Um Then after this, we can actually just, instead of 2,000, we'll just do 4,000, so that's 6 seconds, 9, 10, it's, it kind of works out to be like a little bit longer, actually. I'm trying to think, this will be, that'll be 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4, 5, 6, I mean, and 10, yeah, so this will pretty much work out with this whole section. It'll pretty much work out about like before a period, like a 10 second unlock, basically. So the total will be about 10 seconds. You don't have, it's not going to be ex perfect, but it's going to be good enough. And then, just like before, we'll reset our passwords. So I'm just going to copy and paste because I don't feel like retyping it. This will clear slash reset passwords locked enter passwords. We'll, we'll want to reset our tries to three. So we'll just do tries equals three. Reset tries. And we're going to have one more condition. Which isn't just gonna be our else, so if both are incorrect, so we'll subtract one from try, so tries minus minus, so I'll take one away from total attempt, total tries. So then after this, we'll call a serial dot print line. We'll say pa oops, password incorrect denied. Try again. And then from here, we'll just put another small delay. 10 should be more than enough. Then from here, we're going to make sure our thing is in the locked position. Oop, that's one thing I forgot here. So, obviously we don't want it to stay in the unlocked position. So, we'll re put that to the locked position. Totally forgot about that. That wouldn't be good because then it would just stay unlocked. We don't want that. So we'll just make sure it's always in the lock position. So we'll, even though it's already there, we'll just rewrite it just to make sure it's in the lock position. And then we'll increment the variable incorrect, which we saw before up here for times incorrect. We'll just increment that by one. Add one, two times incorrect. 
I'm just doing this quickly. Obviously, I'm gonna edit this code later on because I want to add another feature in the admin section where you can um, be able to change the regular login password to something else. So right now, I think we had it set to 159357. Maybe we can add a feature that you can, if you press a certain combination of keys in the admin account, it'll bring it to like a change password. And then you can like reset the password, but for now, we'll just do this. So after this, we'll do another for loop to play like a little unlock beeping tone. We'll just create another, we'll call it N. We'll set it to zero. Say N is less than three. Sounds good enough. And plus plus, because it starts at zero, so this will make it beep three times. So now what we're gonna do is Tone, speaker, I think 400 would sound pretty good, and we'll do it for about half a second. And uh, we'll do our analog, right, our incorrect LED, so this will be the red LED. Hi, we'll delay half a, should we do half a second? Yeah, half a second should be good. And then... Uh, we'll do this. We'll just copy these two lines. Here instead of rain tone, we're going to use a function called no tone. You know, we don't really have to. Because it has a, a preset duration before it shuts off. We'll just do it anyways. Instead of max brightness here, we'll put it to zero. So this will turn on the red LED, turn off the red LED, a beep, stop all sounds. So that will run three times. And then in or else we're going to create another if statement. So if, this will be if our tries runs out, so if it equals zero. And note that we're not using one equals here because we're not saying something, we're using double equals which is going to compare it to something. Oops. We need one more there to close the perfect. Okay. So if our tries is equal to zero, which means we've ran out of tries. What we're going to do is we're going to serial a print line. We'll say ran out of tries locked for, we'll do 30 seconds. So basically, similar to like a safe or something you have at home once you have attempted, I think it's about usually three tries. It locks out the system for a preset amount of time, usually it's 30 seconds or a minute before you can re enter the system to try and log in again. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a little lockout basically. So once you run out of the tries, so what we're going to do here, we'll just do another for loop. We'll just make another integer, temporary integer, we'll call it T. We'll start it at 30. Or run until 3 is greater than 0, we'll say t minus minus minus, which will decrement the value t instead of adding one like before, it's going to subtract one in this case. And we'll just do a, we'll just put a, a little new line there just to make it look nicer here. So here we'll do a serial dot print, and we'll just say t. I will analog write our red LED on max brightness. We'll delay half a second. And then we'll set this to off. Oops. We'll set that to off. Wait another second. That seems pretty good, so 
turn red lady on off delay half second one thing we haven't done in a while is save because we want to make sure we don't lose any of our work um, then after the 30 seconds is up we'll reset our uh, we'll just fix this formatting up a little bit so you can tell what's what so once that for loop is over we're going to reset our tries back to three reset tries we're almost done we have a couple more lines and I'll play re-enabled tone so this will just play like a little two beeps to let you know that the system has been um, restarted or like not unlocked but like it's unlocked you from being able to not enter passwords so now you can like re-enter passwords again so let's do tone speaker We'll do 900 again for 50. We'll delay this time 50. We'll make it very fast. And now we'll call serial dot print. This time we'll print a line. We'll just make a new line. We'll say enter. Password, password, just like before, and we have one more line of code we have to add, which is our reset password. So we'll say pass dot reset. Oops, forgot semicolon. We'll do our admin dot reset. Reset passwords. And if we did this all correctly, hopefully we get no errors. We got an error for the append. Did we not create? Did we not create the admin? We did admin. That is weird. Let me just check that quickly. So it should be working. So our default. Ah, that's what I forgot. We have to actually append something into it. So we're going to do E key. Because we have to actually pass something into it. Because it doesn't know what it is. We have to pass something in. Now hopefully that all works. Oop. Forgot semicolon. Did I miss anything else? Semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Oop. Not upload. I don't have my Arduino connected right now. But hopefully, after this compiles, hopefully we have no errors, and... Yep. So if they compile correctly, it's just, there's no Arduino, so that's basically it. The software section is done. Now all you have to do is hook up your Arduino, make sure everything's plugged in correctly, as seen in the last video, the hardware video. Upload it, open your server monitor, and give it a shot. See you soon.